Live, it's the Bison Football Show. Valley News Live and Gate City Bank present the Bison Football Show with head coach Chris Kleiman. Well, Northern Iowa halted the Bison winning There's streak at 33 games this past Baseball weekend, but make no mistake, the record win streak may never be matched again. It was that good. It's something to be very proud of. But now it's time for a Bison Nation group hug and get back to business. We welcome to the set head coach Chris Kleiman. And coach, uh, you know, you, you lost a game, but it's not the end of the world. All the goals are still out there. How are the guys doing? How are you doing today? Yeah, we're, we're doing well. I mean, that's what we talked about last yeah. night is <clears throat> all of our goals are still in front of us. If, uh, if we can regroup, and I'm counting on our seniors. I, I think our seniors will have these guys rallied and ready to play. And uh, we lost a tough game on the road. Yep, and you get everyone's best shot, and you got Northern Iowa's best shot, no question about that, huh? Oh, no question. You look at those 33 wins in a row, and I bet yeah. the last 22 we got people's best shot. No and, question. Uh, yeah. and so give them credit. I thought they played a nice game, had a nice plan, and, and we'll go back to work uh, starting today. Well, let's break this down, see how it played out here. Uh, it, was a, it was a great atmosphere. They had their crowd out there, and uh, the Bison won the toss, deferred, and you forced a three and out early. Defense was the story early. Defense was the story for both teams early. I thought we were, ex were exceptional early on, had great energy on defense. Now, third and 18 here, Carson DeVra. You get 13, you have to punt as well. Yeah, I thought this was a good play just to keep moving the football, even though it was third and 18, and just get a better situation to punt. Well, David Johnson, everybody knows about him. He's an outstanding player. He gets 18 yards here. Yeah, he's an exceptional back, and uh, we just miss a fit there. But the guys are running to the football, and, and uh, he, we knew he was going to make some plays. They threw it a lot early, and Breon Carnes not a great throwing quarterback. No, they just tried to set up some things to make some easier throws for him, and uh, I thought we probably missed a few opportunities where we maybe could have gotten off the field with some interceptions, but we played real good pass defense. Yeah, third and ten, great coverage over the top here by Dudzik. Yeah, really good job by Champ, and, and uh, Duds getting to the football and knocking that play away. It's still a defensive struggle. Boy, tough field position early, I thought, for the Bison also. Yeah, we, miss, we mishandled the punt. We didn't field it, and so we get it inside or two, and it's always hard to start any momentum offensively when you're starting down there. One yard for King here. Now you have to punt again uh, back to David Johnson, too. Yeah, we're losing the field position battle, but we're, we're winning in the fact of we're keeping them out of field goal range right now, and so our defense is still hanging in there. That was just a great one-handed catch right there by Johnson. Now it's third and 15, and Kyle Emanuel gets a sack. Great motor here. Yeah, great play coming back on the quarterback, getting the sack, knocking him out of field goal range. You know, third down was an issue throughout the game. On this play, you do execute a third down play, but there was a penalty. Yeah, we shot ourselves in the foot. We had too many penalties on, on in the times where we had first downs or at least had our momentum going offensively. Good adjustments, though. Uh, you know, coming up here, no gain for Johnson, so you're continuing to you get some good rhythm defensively here. Yeah, we do a nice job fitting this play, and Travis makes a really good tackle, and you've got to gang tackle this guy. Now on a punt, uh, you're going to get a penalty, uh, rough the punter here, but it ended up not hurting you, but these are tough plays, special teams. Yeah, and we knew special teams was going to be a factor. We thought we needed to go after the punt, but we got to stay off the punter. Well, you do get a takeaway, though. You turn it around, and, and takeaways were, you know, big in this game. It did end up evening out, but this is a big one here. This was a big takeaway. This, uh, we thought, turned the momentum. We'd get the uh, ball inside of their 40-yard line and have a chance to take that early lead. You know, and this puts you in pretty good position, really, and here's a nice play right here. I thought this was a great play design, and a good job by Carson hitting Jeff in the flat and, and uh, picking up good yards. Now, third and one, you get stuffed here, uh, forces a field goal attempt that you miss, but there was a penalty. Uh, uh, this was an interesting sequence right here. Yeah, they have a penalty on their special team, so we get a free uh, set of downs and, and moving inside the 10-yard line. And here's the interception. This was a big play. Yeah, it really was. We talked about it. They're so opportunistic on defense. Tip balls they were going to get, and we just couldn't, uh, we couldn't allow that to happen, and we did. You know, Northern Iowa capitalized on the, on the turnovers. They had 10 points off turnovers in this game. Yeah, they did. We should have been ahead 3 to nothing or 7 to nothing, and instead we're down 7 to nothing because of the turnover. Carnes can really run the football, too. Not a great passer, but he can really run it. Yeah, he adds an extra threat. You know, when you get really two running backs in the game with Johnson and Carnes, he does a good job getting on the edge for the score. So kind of on your heels right now a little bit, back to the offense. It's third and five. Uh, Carson takes a sack here. Yeah, pretty good coverage downfield, and uh, they end up running a game and, and make a nice play. You know, they're in a good position to get points here before half. They have two uh, runs we're going to show here by Carnes, 15, then 16. They're moving it right before half here. Yeah, they are. We were trying to keep this a one-score game if possible, and we were able to do that. 
Here's a 16-yard run here. Now they're setting up, uh, there's under a minute to go here. They're in field goal position and just an odd play call. I thought they faked the field goal and they have a good field goal kicker. They've got a great field goal kicker. I was really shocked. Uh, maybe they thought they had something and uh, Carlton makes a really good play. We were really happy coming out of that with only being down 7-0. Yeah, because the Bison would get the ball coming out of half there and it was great discipline by the Bison there to not fall for that fake. 7 nothing at half, NDSU 116 yards of total offense. Crockett uh, just had 14 yards at half. Johnson uh, was finding it tough as well. 12 carries for 54 yards. On the Gate City Bank hot seat this week, it's Esley Thornton. If you could have an endless supply of food, what would it be? Chocolate. Nice. If you could live anywhere, where would it be? Um, somewhere warmer than this, just southbound. Yeah, that's probably a popular choice. Favorite thing to do away from football? It's been golfing lately. Not very good, but working on it. Are you a pickup guy, SUV, or a car? Pickup. What would your worst nightmare be? That's pretty weak, but uh, waking up late, it's been a reoccurring dream, and it's not a good feeling. Missing that alarm clock? Yeah, waking up late to one of the football meetings. <laughs> Who's the quietest guy on the team? Eric Olson. I would elaborate on that, but I don't I don't know a lot about Eric yet. <laughs> it's pretty quiet. 100 degrees or 20 below? 100 degrees for sure. Late Favorite weather. thing about Coach Kleiman? He's approachable. Players coach. Describe the feeling during the tunnel walk. Uh, it's exhilarating. It's a lot of suspense knowing the fans are out there and gets the guys pumped up for the game. Well, Coach, you got the ball to start the second half. You had to feel pretty good about that. Yeah, we did. It, you know, the, the story of that first half is we couldn't get into a rhythm offensively. I think we yeah. were 0 for 7 on third down, and uh, when you're in that kind of a rut, it's hard to get any momentum going offensively, and so we knew this first drive of the second half was going to be important for both sides of the ball. Yeah, let's take a look at the second half here and see how this uh, game transpired at Cedar Falls, Iowa at the Uni Dome, and uh, the Bison got the ball coming out of the half, and it, this is a big, big play. It's a, it's a turnover. Yeah, we can't have this happen. And, uh, now they get great field position and, and are able to capitalize. Now we're chasing points. Yeah, the, you held them to a field goal. That's great. But now it is a two-possession game. And in a game like this, that's huge. In a defensive battle, you can't go down two possessions because now you're kind of scrambling a little bit and uh, give them credit. We see the Jets sweep a lot or just a kind of an end around and uh, not to Andrew Bonnet a lot, though, and he loses yards here. Yeah, they made a good play. You know, Nick DeLuca, I thought, when you, uh, you adjusted and you put him in the game, he really showed up. Nick did a great job, and uh, he yeah. played uh, more snaps than he has since the South Dakota game and, and did some really good things. Huge opportunity here as well. This was a big play in the game. Yeah, we just missed it. You know, uh, we, we dialed one up. Coach Palasek had a good call, and we just didn't convert on it. Hey, Ben LeCompte punted well, didn't he? Yeah, Ben did a great job punting. Uh, and we did a really good job by Zach Colvin, making sure that thing stays uh, inside the five. So at this point, this is a real good situation to be in. You keep them pinned. You know, when you get them pinned at the one, you want to keep them there, huh? Yeah, critical for them not to get a first down so that we can keep them down there and give our offense great field position. And then CJ makes a great return. Yeah, this is huge. He gets it all the way down to the 12. He's breaking tackles, and now, now you're in the red zone. This is fantastic. Three runs to Crockett, but you did not find the end zone here. No, nah, we miss a couple of blocks, and they stuff us, and now we're forced into three, and we probably should have gotten seven on that drive. But... It's back to a one possession game. You have the momentum back, but also another huge play in the game coming up. This is a huge return here. Yeah, turnovers and special teams, we told the guys would be a key, and we missed a tackle right there where he's at the 25 yard line, and instead he's got great speed and takes it uh, beyond midfield, and then they uh, get another three out of that drive. Yeah, you know, the, the defense really bowed their neck, though. We're in the fourth quarter now. Uh, it's a two possession game again, but it's 13 3. Bison were down 23 10 at the Fargo Dome in the fourth quarter last year, uh, but just nothing, no flow offensively, really. No, we can't get yeah. anything going. They're starting to lay their ears back and try to get after the quarterback and doing a good job covering downfield. Held them to a field goal again, so it's still two possessions, still in the ball game, 16 to three, but a, a very, very tough sequence coming up here. A tough kick, not a great return. There's a penalty and then a sack, which forces a punt. Yeah, we're in poor field position off of our kick yeah. return, and uh, so they're able to uh, uh, get some pressure on the quarterback. They sat on the screen uh, of John, and uh, then they're able to make a play. We, we kind of gamble a little bit, try to blitz, trying to make a play on defense, and, yep. and uh, they do a good job. There's a 23-3 to score after that touchdown right there, and here's a, a play at the end that has some significance. Lucas Albers takes a, a tough hit here. Yeah, great throw by Carson, good catch by Lucas. He's playing such a, at a high level, but 
that's what you're getting with football now. You can't go high because you'll get a, a targeting penalty, so uh, defensive players have to go low, and it's unfortunate. Boy, this Xavier Williams, uh, he's been there a long time. He's he's a really good D tackle. Yeah, he's a great player. We struggled blocking him all day, and, and uh, he's a difference maker. So there it is. The streak is over at 23-3 uh, to three is the final. Northern Iowa played very good football uh, this past weekend. The Bison finished with 175 yards of total offense. David Johnson did get 133 uh, net yards for Northern Iowa. Let's hear what the players had to say after the game. Yeah, they were a uh, very good defense, um, very sound. Um, they didn't really do much differently than what we saw on film. They just, they just played very sound and very solid. Um, and they took a lot of things away from us. And at the same time, we missed some opportunities here and there. But i to give, them, give my hats off to them. Their front four was very stout as advertised, so um, we just got to get back to the drawing board. You're down 40 points, up 40 points. You're, we're still going to finish the game, and that's uh, our man mentality uh, uh, for the last four years uh, since I've been here. So, and To a certain extent, it's demoralizing, but at the end of the day, it's, it's a wake-up call. You know, we've been on top for, you know, I don't know how many games, and, you know, we've got close. You know, we haven't came out and played like we were supposed to, and we've some way find a way to win. And tonight we played a great team who just didn't let that happen. You know, Coach said that's probably a heavy burden that we probably didn't really want anymore. Uh, it's a great streak. It's over, and we're moving on. We've won two national championships where we had a loss, and and we understand that. And, and at the end, end of the day, we know that there's a bigger goal, you know, that we gotta that we gotta get ready to get ready for because, you know, Missouri Valley Conference is still right there, it's still on our taking. We just gotta keep doing what we do. Well, time for our Nodak Mutual Insurance Player of the Game. You can always count on Kyle Emanuel. Not only did he play well, seven tackles, a sack, another tackle for a loss, but Kyle Emanuel stepped up to the plate after the game, faced the questions. Kyle Emanuel is a great player and a great leader. Um, gave us a great speech, you know, talked about moving on, not letting this thing uh, beat us more than one week. Um, so that's exactly what we'll do. Um, look at the film, see what we can do better, and uh, move on to Missouri State. Coach, that's a great point. Uh, you never want a loss to beat you twice, and what he means by that is to, you know, really feel sorry for yourself and let it pour into next week. That's hard to do, isn't it? Yeah, it is, but uh, uh, you're talking about a bunch of great seniors yeah. and Carson as a junior that uh, were able to express their feelings after the game, and uh, when you have adversity, and we have a little bit of adversity, yeah. um, you look to your seniors, you look to your captains and leaders, and I don't think we've got the best captains and the best seniors in, in all of college football, so I'm excited about uh, the challenge ahead of us this week. I agree. Uh, how about some injuries? Uh, Christian Dudzik left the game, uh, looked like maybe a shoulder injury, and Lucas Albers as well we saw in the video there. Yeah, Lucas has a knee, we'll find out today, yeah. and uh, uh, Christian has a shoulder, we'll find a little bit more uh, about today, but... Uh, uh, we'll just have to evaluate it, and, and if not, the next guy's got to be ready to play. Yeah, let's dissect the, the kick returns. There was only two of them in the game, Coach, uh, but they were big. The first one was the, the first play of the game, actually. It was the, the kickoff. It was a 41-yarder. They have great return guys, didn't they? they? They really do, and we missed our spot in kicking this one. Ben's usually so so good uh, at hitting his spots, and we kicked it down the middle and um, you know missed a couple of tackles, and, and we'll, we've got to work on that uh, this week. Our kickoffs, uh, everyone just thinks you just boot the ball as far as you can, but there's some situations where you want to place it. Oh, we want to place it, and then we have specific fits where everybody's supposed to be, and, and we had a guy get out of his fit there, and then they end up getting a big play, and that one should have been tackled at the 25. We just missed a, a tackle that we've got to be able to make. Okay, Coach, let's uh, dissect the big picture here. Uh, you know, it's just one loss. Uh, there's been losses in prior seasons, uh, national championship years. You see the records here in 11 and 12. Uh, there were two home losses, actually. This is the first road loss since Eastern Washington. But, you know, in, in 11 and 12, those losses uh, really galvanized the team a little bit, and that can happen again. Yeah, you bet. That's the great thing about FCS football. You, you lose a game if we're playing in the FBS and lose a game, they'd probably knock us out yeah. of the Final Four and all yeah. those other things. In the FCS, uh, you just got to get to the playoffs. And for us, we need to be able to still uh, have all our goals in front of us to win in the Missouri Valley and hopefully host in some playoff games. But yeah. uh, that starts with our first practice on Monday. Hey, it's way better to lose in November than December, right? Yeah, absolutely. That's, it is. that's the great thing about FCS football. Get in the bracket and let it roll, and that's what the Bison will do. Well, coming up, we're going to talk about the offensive line a little bit. Zach Johnson has been out. People forget about that. We're going to update his status. Stay with us. Welcome back to the show. The offensive line has played well this year, despite lots of players who are seeing significant time for the first time. And also, it's easy to forget the Bison don't have perhaps their best lineman 
In this week's Olaf Anderson construction feature story, we tie it all together for you. The 2014 Bison started carving out their offensive identity, and the most important unit on that side of the ball started taking off. Jeremy Kelly stepped up, how Austin Coonert stepped up, uh, Adam Schuler in a leadership role, Joe Haig, you know, Landon Leckler, all these guys, they're just, uh, they're hardworking, selfless guys. For two of the youngest members of the O-line, Jack Plankers and Austin Coonert, their growth as football players came with a much needed attitude adjustment. Uh, you got to be a nasty dude up front, you know, you can't be nice and, you know, want to say hi to everybody, you got to be mean. Yeah, my dad told me when, uh, when I first started going out for football, I was just a nice kid all the time, and uh, once I stepped on the field, I turned into a completely different person. The Bison offensive line has played with an edge that you expect from them in the trenches. And shocking as it may seem, as well as they've played this year, they're still without an all-conference talent up front. Junior Zach Johnson, who's redshirting while recovering from shoulder and knee injuries. Yeah, it made me look at things differently. It made me want to definitely get back out there and play and it's not a surprise I knew we could come out and be physical just like we have been in the past and it's been it's been a great year actually I've been I'm really proud to watch these guys grow up having him around in meetings and having him out in practice it's I think it's good for our, the morale of our group they enjoy having him around I think it's good for Zach you know kind of seeing a little bit of a light at the end of the tunnel as far as the journey with the injuries Connor Riley said this year's group is realizing more and more what it takes to be a Ram at NDSU week in and week out and if the team wants to make a deep playoff push, it'll start with the guys who do the most pushing. I think our guys take a lot of pride in that. And, uh, you know, there's, there's an, there is an expectation level here. And those guys are continually um, working on living up to that expectation level. For the Bison Football Show, I'm Jamal Spencer. Yeah, Coach, it's easy to forget about Zach Johnson. I mean, he was an all-conference type player. You lose him before the season starts, and that, that was a big piece of adversity right there. Yeah, it really was. We only really had one starter returning, yeah. and Joe Haig. So those guys have done a great job gelling together. I've been so happy with play of guys like Jesse Hines. That's a senior that's starting at center that has had some injury problems and has stayed healthy this year and done a tremendous job. And uh, Coach Riley has those guys playing at a high level. And Moving forward, the last couple of games of regular season into the playoffs, they've got to be uh, great for us. You know, it sounds like uh, the Zach Johnson rehab is going well. Uh, update us on that, and how important has it been to have him still be a part of the team? Well, it's really critical because he, he understands our offense and he can teach yeah. all those younger guys, and he's able to run around now. He wants to put on pads <laughs> and practice with the scout team, but we're not ready to have him do that. But he'll do it before the end of the season. He'll give us a scout team look, but uh, good thing about Zach, he still has two years left. Yeah, he's going to be good, no doubt about it. Time for our Peterson Farm Seed Future Crop of Bison. NDSU found a gym last year in Chicago. Dakota Reed is certainly rising through the ranks during his redshirt year. Dakota's future is in the back four on defense. He says he is learning a lot in his first season. Right now, the practice is there. They're pretty tough. I like the fact that since I'm redshirt and I get to go against the first, first starting O every single day of practice, so that's pretty cool. Um, I think right now, my strengths right now, I'm starting to kind of recognize different routes that the receivers run. So it's kind of easier for me to like break on the ball or I could tell like which way a receiver is about to break and cut so I could jump the route. Okay, coach, uh, tell us about Dakota Reed and some of that talent back there in that defensive backfield. Yeah, Dakota's going to be an exceptional player for us next year. Uh, I'm not sure if he's going to be a corner or safety. We've got four or five guys back there that we're going to move around to get us in the best position for, uh, for next year. But uh, yeah. Dakota's a special athlete, and he covers Zach Bra and Trevor Gephardt every day in <laughs> practice and does a great job on, on those guys. So uh, he's learning on the run like a lot of those guys in the back end are. You know, C.J. Smith and Jordan Champion are back next year, so safety uh, losing Hegel and Dudzik, yeah. that will be a situation where maybe there's an opportunity for him, uh, there's an opportunity for others, and there's a lot of talent there, isn't there? You bet. We'll have an open competition at safety in the spring. It'll be a lot of fun because we've got a lot of kids that we're redshirting in the back end that we think are really talented guys. Is Dakota a physical type player? What kind of player is yeah, he? Yeah, physical like champ, um, okay. for sure, and uh, he understands the game of football, which is... Uh, uh, really neat for a young guy to be able to understand, and he kind of expressed that in his interview. Well, coming up, uh, Missouri State is next. It's always a tough trip to Springfield. Uh, they have been really tough on the Bison over the years. We're going to break this matchup down, see how we can get back on track here. Stay with us. All right, Coach. Well, Missouri State is up next. It's a trip to Springfield. It's a 2 o'clock kick. Uh, statewide NBC coverage again for you. 
on television. We'll have the Bison Radio Network fired up as well. And, you know, this matchup, uh, two years ago down there, it was 21-17. Yeah. Four years down there, ago down there, it was 3 nothing loss uh, right before the playoffs. So I don't know, what is it about this matchup? Uh, it's you hit it. There's certain matchups yeah. against teams that uh, you always kind of struggle, uh, and uh, this is one of those teams that uh, even coming into the dome last year, they scored the most points of anybody uh, against uh, NDSU last year. So uh, they'll have a good plan. It's senior day for them. It's the last home game, and uh, uh, we'll have our hands full. You know, I actually thought coming into the year, Missouri State was uh, maybe an under the radar team. I think they have better talent. I think. You know, forget their record. They're they're better than their record. You know, we say that a lot, but I really believe it's true with these uh, guys. Absolutely, they they were three and one to start the the non-conference season. Played Oklahoma State extremely tough and beat a couple of potential playoff caliber teams in the Southland Conference. And uh, yeah. uh, you know, they've just not kind of gotten it going yeah. in the in the uh, uh, conference season. But the Kira Harris is a quarterback that uh, the, he makes them go, and he's a lot like the kid we just faced. Probably throws it a little bit better, yep. but he can really run around. So we've got to have a great plan against them. And then defensively, they've just always played the Bison tough. Yep. Terry Allen is a very good friend of yours, isn't he? Uh, talk about Coach. Uh, he's been around this uh, league a lot. Coach has been around this league a lot. I played for Coach Allen. He's my yep. mentor and somebody that I look up to and have an awful lot of respect for. And uh, uh, I like it because I get to go down there and see him, see his family, but uh, uh, he'll have the Bears ready to play the Bison, I know that. Yeah, no question about that. And we'll recap the game with Missouri State next week for you, and the Bison will get back on track. Count on that. Enjoy the week, everybody. We'll see you.